Today we're going to be helping a friend out um, add some skid wheels to the bottom of their sprint van. Um, so Trevor, avid mountain biker, uh, has also done Ninja Warrior. Dude's like super duper health nut, unlike me. Um, so Trevor came back to me with uh, this challenge of we're going to put some skid wheels on the back of the Sprinter van in order to protect an undermounted generator, uh, which custom, pretty expensive, pricey? It costs more than I'd like to admit. Yeah. We're going to go through all the different steps that we need to. We're going to get this welded up. We're going to get it, uh, get it attached to the bottom of the bumper. Uh, uh, so this should be pretty beefy. Beefy. piece of quarter inch steel at the end of this so that we have something to push against. I mean, it sits on there perfect. So Trevor and I did the measurements. And so we need a total distance from the bottom of the bumper to the wheel of five inches. So measuring the, the wheel by itself, we came up with three and a half inches. So it gives us about an inch and a half of steel shaft that we need in order to weld to the wheel and then weld to the bottom of the bumper. All right, so as we get started, one of the first things that I always like to do is give the steel a good rub down with some acetone. That cleans off a lot of the grease. It helps work with cleaner steel. Always wear gloves. Um, you know, this stuff can get to your skin and uh, it's not really good for you. So always throw on some rubber gloves. Anyway, so you cannot drink it. It's, it's not good for you. Um, we're going to just working primarily with this one end down here. So just get everything cleaned up. Smells great. So one of the things that we're doing in order to help make this beefy is we've gone with two and a half inch by two and a half inch uh, by three sixteenth inch steel. So you guys can see the depth of the, or the width. I will tell you from personal experience, you've got a couple of different solutions when it comes to cutting steel. I started off with one of the abrasive uh, chop saws because of cost. And I'll tell you that after spending the better part of my day is going through and resetting breakers uh, just because I was burning through it uh, when I was making the welding table. You can check out that video by clicking up here. I decided to go forward with the Evolution because it's got a steel blade made for cutting steel. So this is like a miter saw going through a two before versus trying to get through this thing with a piece of sandpaper. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and make our first cut. Safety first. On these miter saws, um, again, you've got the steel teeth and rather than shooting out, you know, billions of, uh, pieces of fine metal particles like sand, like sawdust, but steel dust, um, this sends out shavings. So it's easier to clean up, less of a mess. Uh, there's less heat. Uh, so one of the things you'll look at when you cut steel with, uh, an abrasive wheel is it's very hot to the touch. Uh, you also end up with a lot of sharp edges. These cut much cleaner and it's worth the extra hundred bucks that I would have spent for this versus an abrasive wheel. Always wear eye protection, and this is pretty loud. You may want to wear ear protection, but I listen to 80s metal, so meh. Got a little bit of shavings on here, but super clean cut. Okay, so we've got the pieces cut down after doing our measurements. And one of the things you can take a look at, so there's a handy dandy uh, measuring wheel. So essentially you just keep dialing it up until you get to the thickness. So this is a seven gauge. So we'll use that in order to put the right settings on the welder. So with this welder, so essentially we can just hit the home button. Uh, we're gonna do MIG steel with C25. Uh, we are running a mix of argon and CO2. So we make sure that we've got the connections hooked up in the right place, which we do. Okay, so the diameter, so like we said that this is a 3 16ths or it's 11 gauge steel. Uh, so the diameter of the wire is 30. So the first setting is the diameter of the wire. Uh, so how much, what is the wire that you got inside the machine? Then 30 is correct. And then we need to set the, get the size of the steel. So we're gonna set this back to, your options are either 12 gauge or 10 gauge. 
Um, so we're going to stick with tin. It's going to burn a little bit hotter and it's going to make sure that that weld penetration goes a little bit deeper because again, we want to make sure that this is beefy. Once you have those settings in there, hit enter and it comes back with some pre-configured settings for you. After you do a little bit of welding, if you don't like it, you can come back and tweak those a little bit if you like, but uh, in my experience, for the most part, it's gotten a pretty uh, dead on. And just because we've got access to the inside and with the amount of weight that's going to be supported by these, we're going to go ahead and throw a weld on the inside as well as the out. That should help this thing uh, be super beefy. Beefy. There we go. All right, so here's the finished product. Well, not the finished finish. We still need to get it painted. Um, however, we've got the shaft welded to the bracket. We've pulled out the bolt so we can get everything uh, primed. We're going to paint them once we get them put on the hitch. Uh, and now just comes the job of getting them, getting them welded up. That was it. Too down. Too far away. All in all, it went pretty well. Uh, a couple things we ran into that we didn't uh, anticipate would have been a lot easier if we could have pulled that bumper, but uh, the way it's bolted into the frame and everything else, it would have been more trouble than it's worth. So uh, we did weld upside down, which is the first for me. Uh, didn't, uh, they weren't quite as pretty as I'd hoped. I think all in all went very well. Uh, I don't know what time is it? Was it about five hours total? Yes. Yeah, about five hours total, complete with uh, cutting the steel and uh, getting everything welded up, getting it painted, getting everything put back together. So. Driver, hope you're happy with it, buddy. Um, whenever you guys uh, get a chance to test it out and run over some stuff, let me know how it works. So, hey guys, Tom's badass. And if you need something done, Tom's your guy. He hooked me up with my van. I have some more projects that he doesn't know about yet. So stay tuned for future Ninja Motel van DIY jobs. Uh, myself and the Badger, we're coming back. You can check us out on our channel, but be sure to watch more of Tom's DIYs because he's the man.